Hey everyone, I am Nathaniel Rufflejance, and welcome back to Nintendo Prime. We have a bunch of news stories for you today. We got Pokemon stuff, we have updates on Harvestella, we have updates on Nintendo's financial briefing, and more. I am so stoked, and this is going to be probably quite the long video, so be sure to go around to our timestamps down below, and be sure to enter uh, uh, our giveaway for this bad boy right here. Remember to check our videos every single day. We have an extra code in all of our videos or in pinned comments. It's gonna vary day to day. And I'm not gonna tell you where it is. You're just gonna have to find it throughout the video. Uh, so the code for today is, oh wait, again, not gonna tell you when it's coming. That being said, editor, roll that intro. <laughs> All right, our first bit of news is going to actually be Nintendo's financial briefing. We have a ton of information to go over. The first of which is that the Nintendo Switch has sold 111.08 million units today. Now, this is the first quarter financial results of the current fiscal year. So March, April, and June. And yeah, that puts it really only behind PlayStation 4 and Game Boy coming up next. Not really only, but those are the next things up. Uh, I believe PlayStation at 117 or 114. I don't know. Something like that. PlayStation 4 is up there and Game Boy at 118 million. Likely going to pass both of these by the end of this current fiscal year. And one thing I want to jump into right away is the game sales because we have a massive list of game sale updates. And you know what? Let's just jump right into the list and you guys enjoy this gameplay. So the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is at 46.82 million. It gained 1.49 million in the quarter. Animal Crossing New Horizons has 39.38 million. It gained 740,000 units this quarter. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is sitting there at 28.82 million. It gained 650,000 units this quarter. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild is at there at 27.14 million. It sold 590,000 units. This quarter, Pokemon Sword and Shield is sitting there at 24.5 million units. It gained 230,000 units this quarter. Super Mario Odyssey is at 23.93 million units. It gained 430,000 units this quarter. Super Mario Party is at 18.06 million. It sold 280,000 units. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl are sitting there at 14.79 million units. It sold 140,000 plus units. Pokemon Let's Go has sold 14.66 million. It gained 130,000 units in sales this quarter. Ring Fit Adventure is sitting there at 14.54 million. It sold 450,000 units this quarter. And that actually rounds out the top 10. But we have updates on other games as well. Nintendo Switch Sports has sold 484 million total units. And it only released in this quarter. Kirby and the Forgotten Land, which actually technically released at the end of last fiscal year, has 4.53 million units. It gained 1.88 million units in sales this quarter. Mario Strikers Battle League also debuted at 1.91 million units now we have some notes on all of this so we're going to dive into this and uh mario kart sales funnily enough are actually a million away from being more than the entire population of the country of spain that's pretty insane. At 4.53 million units, Kirby in the Forgotten Land is the second best-selling Kirby game of all time and is also selling faster than any prior Kirby game. It should actually become the best-selling before it's even been out for one year. The only game ahead of it is Kirby's Dream Land, and that sold 5.13 million units. Switch's retention rate is actually really, really good. Over the last calendar year 12 months, 104 million different Nintendo Switch units fired up at least once to play a game. While Nintendo saw year-over-year -year declines of around 4.7% with sales, reality is that they think some regions still don't have enough Switches and that their semiconductor issues will improve heading into the fall. Also, they do plan to use more expensive methods to get holiday shipments out to stores to make stock as full as possible. And I basically, this is just my interpretation, I read this as they're likely going to be flying units into various countries. And they have done this before. They did this after Switch's launch when they were struggling to get enough units out there. Uh, so yeah, they're probably going to be flying them in to make sure units are plentiful for the holidays. Despite the year-over-year -year decline, Nintendo has not adjusted their yearly projections, which actually actually means this was expected and already calculated into projections they made to start the fiscal year. So 
really it's kudos on Nintendo for correctly projecting where their sales and stuff are going to be so they don't have to keep updating their projections. And yes, Nintendo has updated their projections last fiscal year. They had to keep updating and their projections to make sales less and less. This year, they seem to be a lot more conservative with their projections and thus their projections are still right on slate to be what they told investors at the end of last year so look that's a lot of data to digest you can get into the gritty nitty numbers nintendo made overall profits of course like they've been doing the entire switch generation they talked briefly about how the switch oled is not as profitable for them as the base nintendo switch and the switch Lite. something to do with components just being more expensive and being even more and more expensive right now when there's shortages so switch oled is still profitable just the margins aren't as great as they are on the other platforms. That probably explains why they're selling it for $350. I know a lot of us kind of view it as that doesn't make sense to us, but we're also used to companies like Sony and Microsoft selling systems at a loss to get ahead in the market. Nintendo doesn't like to do that. I think the last time they did that was when they slashed the price of the Nintendo 3DS, uh, and they did that because the sales were not going well. Well, the sales for Switch are going really well, so they're not going to do that here. I don't know. These sales look great, and uh, I want to get into our next story. A brand new game was announced today called All Elite Wrestling Fight Forever. And here's the little 30-second thing that doesn't really show you much. It's made by THQ Nordic and Ukes. The gameplay reveal is happening on August 12th. Notably, the producer for the game actually worked on the N64 wrestling games No Mercy, NWO, WCW World Tour, and games gamers basically really felt that those were good games. Now, we have a couple screenshots to share with you guys. It's definitely a more arcadey game, so kind of keep that in mind that we're not looking at this being a simulation wrestling game, but I think an arcadey style game works for wrestling. I know some people argue the visuals aren't great, but obviously for us Nintendo Switch owners, they're the kind of visuals we come to expect, and I think they actually look pretty good, and it's going to look really good on Switch. So, hey, you know what? All Elite Wrestling is a brand new game, and we don't know when it's coming. It just says coming soon. So soon, I think, implies at least this holiday, but we'll probably find out on August 12th when they do the gameplay reveal. So unless you've been living under a rock today, you know that there was a Pokemon Direct, and if you didn't know there was a Pokemon Direct, let me be the first one to tell you, yes, the Pokemon Company presented a Pokemon Presents today, and I'm not going to go over all the news from it because, frankly, the only stuff we really care about around here are updates to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And thankfully, not only did I watch and live react to it, which you can go check that out, I also have the official details from the Pokemon Company right now that I can actually read through and give you a full recap. So first off, Let's get into that while you guys are watching the footage. Welcome to Paldea. Players will start their adventure in the Paldea region, a land of vast open spaces dotted with lakes, towering peaks, wastelands, and mountain ranges. Players will find lots of people and Pokemon living together in a variety of locations, ranging from a farming village with bountiful harvests to a port town with a bustling marketplace. There are also Pokemon living in treetops, rivers, and other locations in the wilderness. In the center of Paldea sits the largest city in the region, Mezagoza. It's here that players will find either Naranja Academy or Uva Academy in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. The name of the school, its emblem, and its uniforms and other details will differ depending on which version of the game is played. The Pokedex will be loaded up on the Rotom phone as an app. Players will be able to see a map of the entire Paldea region in the map app, which will also show their current location. Players will also see all kinds of information like nearby towns, Poké Centers, and wild Pokemon. Terrestrial Phenomenon. This phenomenon is found only in the Paldea region and makes Pokemon shine and glimmer like gems. When a Pokemon terrestrializes, a Terra Jewel appears above the Pokemon's head like a crown, and the Pokemon body glistens like a cut gemstone. All Pokemon in Paldea can terrestrialize to gain special powers, and terrestrialization allows players to enhance their battle strategies by increasing the power of any moves that have the same type of as their Pokemon Terra type. There are 18 types, meaning that there are countless combinations of Pokemon and Terra types. Players can terrestrialize a Pokemon once per battle, and the transformation will last until the battle ends. Players will need a Terra Orb to terrestrialize a Pokemon, which will need to be recharged after each use. Players can charge a Terra Orb by touching crystals, overflowing with terrestrial energy, or by going to a Pokemon Center. There are Terra Raid Battles, and they occur in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet when three players team up to take on a terrestrialized wild 
Pokemon. Trainers can find other players to participate in a Terra Raid Battle through the Terra Raid Battle option, then choose to recruit allies or join someone else's raid to have a battle together with friends a player already knows they'll need to set a link code this battle system has a time limit and allows players to continue attacking seamlessly without having to wait for other trainers to choose their actions there's poke portals and a union circle so in pokemon scarlet and pokemon violet players can trade and battle with trainers all over the world by using a feature called the poke portal trading in the poke portal a link trade lets players trade with a specific person with a surprise trade after after choosing a Pokemon to trade, players will be able to trade with a random trainer somewhere in the world. Battling in the Link Battle option in the Poke Portal, players will be able to have Pokemon battles with other Pokemon trainers. Additionally, with the new Union Circle feature added to the Poke Portal, a player and up to three friends can adventure together in the same space. People of the Paldea region. We have Clavel. He acts as the director of the academy and will teach the player many things about their school. Jack, Mr. Jack, is very knowledgeable about Pokemon biology and the developer of the Pokedex app for the Rotom phone. He also will be the player's home homeroom teacher. Arvin. Arvin is an upperclassman of the academy. He's good at cooking and is researching healthy recipes that can help Pokemon feel better. Penny has a lot of a bit of a shy personality and for some reason she doesn't seem to come to the academy very often. Gym leader of the Glacido Gym, Grusha. Grusha used to be a professional snowboarder, but he is now the gym leader of the Glacido Gym full time. He is an ice type specialist who has to tighten as his partner. In addition to the new regional Pokemon found across both Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, different species of Pokemon will appear depending on which game the player purchases. For example, Larvitar and Stonejourner appear in Pokemon Scarlet, while Bagnon and Iskew appear in Pokemon Violet. Fido, Fido's skin has electric qualities. So this is a brand new Pokemon in the game and it's, it's both firm and soft at the same time. When these Pokemon become excited, they intimidate their opponents by puffing up their bodies to appear big. Bigger. Fido ferments things in its vicinity using the yeast in its breath. The yeast is useful for cooking, so this Pokemon has been protected by people for a long time time. It's a fairy type for those interested in that. Uh, there's also the uh, Paldean Wooper. In ancient times, Wooper lived underwater in the Paldea region. After losing in a struggle for territory, it seems they began living in bogs on land. To keep from drying out while living on land, they began to cover their bodies with a poisonous film. Their gills have hardened thanks to living on land for so long. Their bodies are heavy and they move slowly, but they can protect themselves by shooting a powerful poisonous liquid from their gills. This is a poison slash ground type. And this basically just shows there's going to be localized versions of current and existing Pokemon in this game. Uh, there's also going to be a Sitter Titan. This is talked about before as one of the gym leaders for Pokemon. And it needs to have tough muscles to be able to support their immense bodies and physical attacks. Using their bodies have incredible power. They also migrate around the snowy regions, protected by a thick layer of fat. And this is an ice-type Pokemon, of course. Players will meet a legendary Pokemon, either Corridon or Mirrodon, and it will join them on their journey. Corridon and Mirrodon are full of mystery and are said to have power that far surpasses that of other Pokemon. These Pokemon can change their forms to better suit what they're doing or what terrain they're traveling over. This basically means you can ride them, right? We saw this in the trailer. So they do have a little bit of pre-purchasing stuff. So uh, if you pre-purchase the game digitally, you can receive a special in-game Pikachu as a gift. This Pikachu has two unique characteristics. It knows the fly move, which it normally cannot learn, and its Terra type is flying. Well, that makes some sense there. Players can receive it by choosing to get it via the internet mystery box gift feature of their game up until Tuesday, February 28th of 2023. Again, that's only if you pre-order the game digitally. If players download the digital version of Scarlet and Violet from the Nintendo eShop by Tuesday, they also can receive a serial code for the adventure set, which gives you 10 potions, five full heals, three revives, three ethers, one rare candy, and one nugget the double pack bonus also has a, a a bonus in there as well trainers will receive two codes one per game that will reward them with 100 pokeballs so that's obviously a lot of information to digest i will link you down to the official uh, website for these games if you would like to dive deeper obviously new screenshots and all that but that's the basis of information today it's also notable that it does appear that gyms do not scale so they note that you can actually do gyms out of order there's three different stories in this game but gyms don't scale 
And that is going to be very interesting, and we're going to talk about that further on tonight's podcast. You guys remember that Square Enix exclusive announced at the Partner Showcase Nintendo Direct back in June? Yeah, we have a huge update on that, and it's on the official blog. So you know what? Let's head on over there. So as it says, it says, take a fresh look at Harvestella, and we're going to see screenshots and a whole bunch of information here. Uh, so here's kind of a, a nice giant wide look at this particular screenshot looking out into the overworld with this giant plant looking thing growing. And it says, in June, we revealed Harvestella, a new life simulation RPG that launches November 4th, 2022 for Nintendo Switch and Steam. We gave you a close look at the game, showcasing the game's many depths for farming, crafting, and socializing to fast-paced strategic combat. Even so, we know you want to know more. So we thought we'd give you a new look at the game. Read on which I'm about to do, and we'll reveal one of the visually beautiful towns and a key resident. Take a look at some of the seasonal crops you can cultivate, a new job to take on monsters, and more. For that, however, you can recap stuff we already know. The, the new game is a life simulation RPG. It lets you enjoy daily life, socializing, and adventure, and adventuring in daily life. You can spend a relaxing day farming, fishing, or raising livestock before heading to town to socialize and build your relationships with residents. If you want to test your combat skills, you can step into the dungeon to take on hordes of monsters with a variety of weapons and jobs. Whenever you do, time passes through the seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, but between each one is a fifth season, Quietus. During this time, Crops wither and die, and a deadly dust keeps people trapped indoors. You need to plan around the changing seasons and the grim inevitability of quietus as you attempt to solve the mysteries behind the seasons of death. So, Town of Spring, Nemia. Welcome to Nemia. Very beautiful with the cherry blossoms. I'm loving it. I really think that's a gorgeous look. In this beautiful town, the flowers bloom all year round due to the influence of a nearby spring sea light. All right. Once night falls, the town shows a different side. Ooh, look at the lights in the buildings. I like it. Cherry blossoms dance against the night sky in a dreamlike display. Looks very pretty. Despite its beauty, there is trouble in the town of Nemia. A giant egg has appeared on the spring sea light, one of the giant crystals that governs the seasons. Ever since, unfamiliar monsters have been flying into town and attacking the residents. When you visit Nemia, you become involved with the investigation of the sea light, alongside Assel, a member of Argus Brigade that protects the town. You can see the spring sea light from the observation deck on in Nemia. So this must be the spring right here. Your group sets out to investigate the sea light. But what will you find waiting for you? Who knows? Resident of Nemia, Estenia. Next, we'll introduce you to one of the memorable characters you'll meet in this blooming place, Estina. Estina is a teacher who lives together with the children of the town's orphanage. So there's an orphanage in the town. Nice. She's intellectual, quiet, and rarely displays her emotions openly. She enjoys reading about different places in the world and often reads aloud to the children. This is how she spends her days as she's beloved by the townspeople. However, it's said that she only arrived in Nemia a few years ago. Upon meeting the protagonist, she must confront the past she's kept hidden. So here's some jobs here. we got a, uh, an adventure job. When it comes to battle, you have access to multiple jobs, which define the weapons and abilities you can use in combat. Last time we showed you fighter, mage, and shadow walker jobs. This time we're revealing the job Skylancer. This job uses a spear and excels at physical attacks with wind attributes. Because it learns many wide-range skills that take advantage of the spear's reach, the Skylancer is very useful when facing multiple enemies. When you recruit a character with, who has a certain job, the protagonist will also be able to use that job. In the screenshot above, you can see how working with Asil has unlocked the Skylancer for use. Socializing Character Stories Characters that can join you in battle as allies and other important characters each have their own character story. I like that. These stories focus on the problem that each character will face. As you progress through the character story, learning more about each character's thoughts and feelings, your closeness to them will increase. This grants a range of benefits in combat, and you may even receive rewards. Daily life, special spring produce. Farming is one of many daily life activities you can do in Harvestella. By planting crops and tending to them diligently, you'll be able to harvest them and either sell them or use them yourself in crafting and cooking. Spring crops, some produ products, mm. some produce can be harvested 
all year round, but some kinds of fruits and vegetables can only grow during specific seasons. Here's a glimpse of some spring crops you can cultivate. It looks like a tomato there, the Nemean tomato. We have the Wisty peach. We have the cucumber. A cucumber, it's funny. Um, a straw buddy instead of a strawberry. Uh, spring cuisine. These crops can be used as ingredients in mouth-watering meals. You'll look at some of them. Apologies if this gets your stomachs rumbling. I'm on a diet, so it kind of does. We have the Nemea bolognese. Uh, we have the peach rose mousse. Uh, we have the zucchini and mince sandwiches. Strawberry shortcake. Of course, it's funny. They use strawberry shortcake there. Want to be, well, what are the strawberries called again? Hold on. The strawberries are called straw buddies. So want to be the straw buddy shortcake. Anyways, uh, of course, there are many more types of spring produce you can grow and plenty more meals to make. But to publish more pictures of food would just be cruel. Yes, it would. Thank you. Don't ruin my diet. Daily life fishing. Fishing is another way to be happily while away hours in Harvestella. You'll be able to do it when you obtain a fishing rod. Find a fishing point and you can cast your line and catch some fish. Just as with crops growing on your farm, you can ship fish for money or keep them and use for cooking. What you can catch depends on your location and other conditions. Perhaps you may even catch something other than a fish. You can even upgrade your fishing rod, which will let you catch even rarer fish. And you can see an ever- Sweet fish caught. Daily life with shipping. Seeing some new screenshots here. Uh, you can earn money in Harvestella by shipping fruit and vegetables that you harvest from your fields. Okay, seeing some other stuff here. You can use machines that you've crafted to create processed foods, which will ship an even higher price. We hope you enjoyed this brief look. So, yeah, that is pretty, pretty awesome. And honestly... The more and more I see of Harvestella, the more and more I'm really liking this. We've seen a lot of life sim games in the past, but hey, this one is console exclusive on Switch with no announcement of it going anywhere else. So enjoy. It's uh, something to look forward to for people looking more, for more life simulation news. That being said, I've held your attention long enough. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. And if you happen to stick around this long, the code for today is SNAP. S-N-A-P. All right. Enjoy your extra entries in the giveaway. Catch you guys later. Peace out.